not intended for underage viewers. Hello, this is Keenan of Street Career Sports Training, and welcome to another episode of Time to Ball. This is episode nine. Now, I really need my uh, my political music. Dun, 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 dun. I need that in the background. My name is Keenan, and I'm running for governor. My first task, if elected, will be to deny any road construction from November 15th to Nove- November from November 15th to January 6th. I will also deny back-to-back road construction. If you started on the road, if you started on the road, finish that shit. Don't come back 6 months later and start doing more. I hope I can get your vote. Now, reason I say that is how many of y'all are out trying to shop or or just, you know, enjoying the, 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 the wintry feel? And you're like, yo, all of a sudden this this road is being uh trying to be fixed. Like, yo, man, come on now. Y'all don't need to be uh fixing the lanes and, you know, tearing up the pavement pavement. Now, I guess it's if it's some stuff that it's like emergency. Yeah, I get that if there's a water main break or maybe it was a lot of heavy rain and that heavy rain uh, messed up some of the pavement. But is it me or do they always try to do construction around the holidays? Like it's not stressful enough for people to get in and out of the store, you know, enjoy themselves. Now you got to deal with traffic. It's it's like. I think I think construction companies are like they get paid. I was like, man, I sh- I should probably be doing construction because there's always construction. I don't think I've ever once been anywhere where there wasn't construction. Think about it. Widening other roads, making a median better, you know, fixing the pavement, all of that shit like Damn, man, y'all can't y'all can't pick out a certain time of the other year and do that. So if y'all elect me as governor, I'll take care of that. I will fight the text dots and the, and the construction crews and tell them no more construction during holiday season. Save it for when people are going to be at, you know, work and and, you know, it's the dead part of the year. Nobody's going to be out doing what is it like February or maybe, you know, March or something? Well, now you got, you got, uh, was it, what do you call it? What is that called? I can't even think of it. See, that's, that's how I know it's, it's really boring. Cause I can't even think about it. So it's just my two cents on, on uh road construction. It's a big headache and I don't know what they're doing or when they're doing or how they're doing it. But I know they need to get that shit finished because, like, I'm pretty sure if I go out today, there's going to be something new that they're doing out on the road. And instead of it just being a four lane, they're going to have it all down to one lane. Traffic backed up for like 400 miles. So <laughs> I am I, I, going to confess that Google Maps, you know, that really helps a lot because if you use it, if you don't use it, you should get into using it. I'm not trying to uh, plug them, but I'm telling you, I use it. And a lot of times, if I know certain times of the day I'm traveling, I always look out and see, you know, like I put my I input my address and stuff. And then it'll let me know if that if the freeway or, or the route that I take is, is going to be closed or if there's any accidents or stuff. So. But, I mean, you know, it's just kind of the way of life. So that's my two cents. And I love your vote. (laughs) All right. So I wanted to start out, you know, with asking a question. What the hell are power rankings? How do you come up with them? Now, I see it, you know, uh, professional sports, they have, you know, power rankings. And here's why I asked that question. There was a... um, there was a what was it? it was a power ranking. No, it wasn't a power ranking. It was a it was a meme. No, it actually wasn't a meme. They were talking about how the Cowboys beat the uh, Colts 
you know, the score, I think it was 54 to 12 or something. I, I, don't, I didn't watch the game, so I can't really tell you the final score, but it, it was a lot to a little. And then they said, well, the Eagles, who, who have the, a better record right now, 10-1, and one, the Eagles beat the Colts by one point. So, therefore, the Cowboys are a better team than the Eagles. Then I've had some where uh, they'll say, well, this team beat that team. This team beat this team. This team beat that team. And that team beat your team. So, now, instead of your team being the best team in the, in the NFL, they're actually the worst based on this. So, I have no idea what a power ranking is. Uh, you know, what's the... The algorithm, what's the analytics, you know, what do they use the criteria to to uh, suggest it? And you, you get it preseason rankings. You get it with with college sports and then you get it with high school sports. And, you know, people put out some people put out their power rankings. And my question would be so and, and it's not a knock. I'm not even saying I'm not even knocking those who come up with power rankings because we all have our oh man you know this team's best you know this team's gonna be the second best and stuff like that we base it on whatever we base it on but if you're gonna put out a list i'm just curious as to how you came up with that list did you go talk to all the teams did you consider what those teams are bringing uh what those teams brought back you know how did they finish the season this is kind of how i would do it how did they finish the season last year how many, you know, kids are they bringing back? Are they poised to have kids come in that are going to really help their program? Now, obviously, in, in college, you have a better sense of that. Now, in high school, you really don't. Because unless there are some talented freshmen, like uh, when when K.J. Lewis came and K.J. went to Chapin as a freshman, you knew Ch- Chapin was going to be elevated because of where Ch- uh, where K.J. Lewis was. So that's a little bit different dynamic. But, like, you know, unless you know that you have a top player, how do you know that that team's going to be any good? And if your power rankings are really bad, how did, how does that, you know, fare with, with that, that organization or that person's credibility if you're putting them out there? I'm just saying when you look at it, What's your criteria? I guess that's my question. What is the criteria when a person's doing power ranking? I I feel like you should have it, you know, say, hey, look, this is don't just say, well, this is my list and stuff like, okay, how many games did you see the previous year? You know, on the lower levels, how many games did you see if you're in a league and like, for instance, city leagues, if you're in a city league and you're playing against all of these teams, you got a good sense of it, right? So if you're a coach and you bring up your own power ranking, I guess I can, you know, I, I, I would understand that because you have more of the eye test. But like sometimes when you have these these power rankings and these preseason polls, you know, I do you revisit it? Because here, here, here's what I would like to see. If you have a preseason power ranking, right, some people do their – they're, uh, they update it, you know, weekly. I think Stephen A. Smith uh, has his, he says, the list is fluid. The list is fluid. That's just a, a slick way of saying I, I can change my mind and put whoever I want up there, right? But if you're going to have one of these, I actually think if you're going to do it week to week or maybe one once a month, I think you should put your previous one up with the new one. Now you can see. Like, you know, how 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 good you were and towards the end of the season, you'll see like, OK, yeah, you know what? This person was spot on. Obviously, you're not going to be 100 percent, but you can say, you know, what? this person is was uh, in the ballpark with that. But like if you have preseason rankings where you have some teams that are ranked high and then, you know, four weeks in that team is below 500. And you had that team in the top five, then I probably need to question your, you know, abilities to to understand what you're what you're, you know, putting out. That's me. I'm going to stand on that. Now, you know, if if somebody out there who's listening to this is like, well, you know what? I put mine out and or what have you. Hey, reach out to me. Hell, I'll, I'll interview you and have you to I just because I want to know I'm not dissing. I'm not, you know. 
I'm not trying to uh, get mad at somebody. I just want to know. I'm like, I'm trying to do my top five criteria. I've worked on it. Uh, had somebody else look at some things. They disputed some things, gave me a, a different sense. So I'm back to the drawing board. So I'm going to tweak a few things. I'm, I'm pretty much there. I'm just going to tweak a few things. But now when I put out mine and I say, this is the top five, I'm going to put out my criteria. So now you can look at it and say, oh, OK, you know, you, you could you can argue, well, maybe this person, because when I do my top five or, or, or top 10 or whatever, I'm not necessarily doing them in a particular order. I'm just saying these are the, you know, people. If you put this person in, you say, oh, well, one is this person, you know, you have them numbered. But let's say you're doing it based on their their last name. <laughs> Somebody say, how can you have this person over this person? Like, yo, it's because his last name starts with an A and this person's last name starts with an L. That's why it's in alphabetical order. So I wouldn't do it like that and say, this is this best player, this best player. It's just, look, this is a group of players that I feel is that. But when you look at mine, you'll understand why and where it came from. A lot of this other stuff you don't. So, um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I just kind of feel like it needs to be uh, discussed or at least answered, be a little more transparent when you're putting this stuff out, because if people are looking, you know, people are looking for a reason. And then you're always going to have somebody that's like, I oh, mean, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, this is why I said what I said. But then when you look at records like right now, if you if you grab somebody's power rankings from the preseason or preseason re- rankings, compare them to their newest one or just compare them to those teams right now and see where they're at. And then that'll give you a sense of if that person has a remote idea of what the hell they're talking about. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But I want to know what your criteria is. OK. I got to bring up the elephant in the room. And I'm not saying literally and there's an elephant in the room, but um, last week was it last week or the week before? No, it was last week. No, it was week four. So I can't remember when it was. Uh, I went and watched some games and I happened to be at the Franklin uh, basketball tournament for girls. But I happened to see uh, on, on, on my feed a score from another tournament that that had taken place. This tournament uh, had a team, it was a team called Lubbock Monterey. And they were down here playing in a a tournament called the McDonald's uh, Classic. Really good tournament because they, oh, oh, and and the Franklin tournament was really good. I don't want to, you know, it was some really, they brought some really good talent. And, you know, you you had, you had some key matchups that you were able to see. But, um. They the Lubbock Lubbock team, you know, they feature a girl who's I want to say she's sophomore and she's ranked one or two in the nation in her in her class. She's dominant. You know, she she can do it all. She can do it all. And, you know, she's worth the price of admission. If you ever see them on on your um, on the schedule to play. Now, they played a team girls team here, uh, Pebble Hills. High school, which is six A school, strong, have a uh, you know pretty good group of girls. But the the score, when I saw the score, I, I, I you know how you say you took a double take, I took like a quadruple take. I looked and looked and looked and like, no, I'm not, I'm not reading this right. It's something wrong, and I had to look at something else, and it was right. Uh, Lubbock beat that the Pebble Hills team 122 to 34. And I asked myself when I saw it, first I was like, what the hell is this? Like, you know, I wasn't there. Okay. So I can't tell you, you know, what was happening, how the score got out of hand. I didn't get, uh, I tried to find a box scores I wasn't able to see it so I could have at least saying okay this first quarter because sometimes a team can make a run and you know put a game away but we talking 88 points 88 points 
You know, you've I've read you've read a stuff like that when you have like a, 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 a dominant team that plays like a really super low level. You know, I think there was a, a, t- a game once a high school game where it was like one hundred and twenty to like four. And one girl had like uh, ninety eight points, something like that. All right? It was a while ago. But in any case, an eighty eight point uh, loss for uh, a Sao Paso team. My question is, is that or w- as a high school city, a city, are we that much further behind than the rest of the state? Was it a bad shooting night? I- I'll I'll get more info and I'll bring it up, you know, at some point, you know, just to educate myself. I think there's a film out there. I'm going to try to watch, sit down and watch the game and see what went wrong. But 88 points. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. I don't know what happened. I, I really, really can't. I don't want anybody from Pebble Hills thinking that I'm trashing because I'm not. I'm just asking the question or is is El Paso basketball that much behind the rest of the state? Some will say yes. I would say I don't think we that far behind. Now, obviously, you know, Lubbock's a probably, a, well, not probably, Lubbock's a superior team, but um, 88 points. Y'all have to let that marinate. That was an 88-point victory uh, against a team that uh, I want to say they made the playoffs last year. So I don't know how many they lost, you know. And the sad part, here's the sad part. I was talking to a, a college coach uh, over the weekend and uh, was telling him, about you know about what I seen he thought I was kind of joking so I posed the question to him just off the top of my head no thought process and I said coach if you were recruiting a kid who played at the school that lost by 88 points would you you know would you still recruit would that would that change anything and the coach said yes absolutely Because if you're strong, the coach's feeling was if you're strong enough to be, you know, a a college material, you should be able to affect things. Now, again, he didn't have context. He didn't have context. But off the top of his head was like he was just like utterly surprised that uh, that a school, you know, would lose by that wider margin. Uh, So. I was just, you know, I'm going I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'll put it like that. I'll get to the bottom of it. And I'm going to watch the film and, you know, educate myself more because it but I I can, I get, you know, 30 point victory, 40 point victory. Hell, I, I I guess I can understand even a 50 point victory. But to me, I don't know, looking on the outside, it might have been a little something extra. You know, maybe 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 the team, you know, Pulled into a parking space before before then when they was coming up, you know, maybe maybe they cut in line or something. Maybe they were, you know, talking noise or trash before the game. I don't know. Some some had to happen because, you know, to to continue to to run up the score. I've seen games where kids were, you know, uh, where teams were obviously overmatched and the the other team you know they they pull it in they still play but instead of pressing they you know they they go to a soft zone and they try to let them shoot now i'm not advocating you know hey let them let them play let them win let them you know let them try no that's not what i'm saying if you play sports unless you're in a, a league where it's about participation once you start competitive sports it's about getting better so you're going to take those lumps my question is, in 2022, how far behind is El Paso sports when it comes to basketball? I know baseball. I know football. I know soccer. Those sports, we're, we're, we've won state and track. I know, we, you know, we've had a couple of uh, baseball. We've had football. Ken Dio's gotten, like, to the Elite Eight and Final Four a few years. Our Football programs are, are are getting there, but the basketball and volleyball, yo, come on, man. 
you know, you got a suggestion. If it's yo, yo, K, you need to do more. You're not doing as good of a job as a trainer to help these kids. Okay, I'll accept that. I get I, I don't mind constructive criticism. I get in to get in if I have some kids, you know, and, you know, work and, and try to find figure out what it is. Now, I got a great group of younger kids that are coming up that are making a lot of noise. And I'm going to instill on them. Hey, your effort, you can't be letting no team do just anything they want. Right. You got to make sure you bring it. So, um. I'll I'll continue this once I get a little bit more information because I'm I'm just like I was I was shocked. I thought it was a misprint. I was like, nah, ain't no way in the world, you know. But yeah, apparently it was. So that's the elephant in the room. We gotta do better, everybody. Us coaches, players, you know, spend more time working on your game than on social media. <laughs> Be offended that you that you got you got you know you got your game got your uh, butt whooped like that. Be offended. Come out and take it on the rest of the city. Make it to the make a deep run in the state playoffs and be like, man, we motivated. We was embarrassed that we we took an L like that. Hey, I'm with that. Sometimes you gotta you know have some things go bad f- before you can you know m- correct it, get it right. But uh, yeah, now nah, that's. That's a little much. That's a little much. So if you know somebody, I don't want nobody calling me saying, oh, why would you trashing them? No, I'm asking a question. And if you listen to what I'm saying and you're calling upset, you upset at the wrong person. Right. I'm bringing it up because I'm trying to figure out how we can fix it. But that'll be a discussion for another day. Yo, I like to give a shout out to my sponsors. Next Style Designs. Next Style Designs makes quality shirts or custom apparel for all occasions. Next Style Designs. Mind Inc. Mind Inc. offers a wide array of digital media. Mind Inc. asks, are you using your mind? Southwest Basketball Showcase Recruiting Service. The link between your coach and your dreams. Marikai Zero Down Solar. Call Greg Suber for your solar needs. PCS Plus is the carpet service for all your cleaning needs. Okay, so let me get to my basketball ideology. I know what joy is. Well, what is joy if you ask me? Joy is uh, what I get when I see immediate improvement from from a client. Joy is is when a parent messages me about seeing them, seeing the kids do things that we work on. You know, that that shit's special to me. And a lot of times I'll have parents that'll say, no, I'm going to go outside or, you know, I won't sit in here. I'm going to leave because I make them nervous. And I tell them, no, I need you to sit in here. I need you to see it. I'll take care of that. I'll get on that kid. If you if you're out of pocket over here trying to talk, I'll get on you. Anybody who knows me, who knows when we come in, they know that I don't I don't play that because if you you know, my my motto has been if what you were doing was working, you wouldn't have your child with us. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way. I don't mean it to be, you know, cruel. It's just basically like I'm not a doctor. But if you take your kids to the doctor, you let the doctor examine them and figure out what's wrong. Okay, But here it's kind of the same logic in the sense that they're going to we're going to get to the bottom of it and see what's what's wrong but here's sorry to go off on a tangent here's where i'm getting at when the parents are able to sit there and watch what we work on with the kid whatever it is ball handling shooting passing defense understanding iq they see us work on it they see us put it have them put in the reps they see them get improvement within that workout and then what happens is when they're in the game they actually see those kids do what it is that we work with them on. That's why I get the messages. Now, my joy is starts when I see those kids, when I see those kids do something that they didn't think that they were going to be able to do at the beginning of the, of the training. And it's that joy that really captivates me. I've been doing this for so long, and that's one thing that never gets old. 
it's not a it's not an ego thing for me. It's just a feeling like have you ever uh, helped somebody outside? Like, you know, open the door for for someone who you saw was maybe possibly struggling, you know, help this person with something. You did a good deed and there's a little feeling that you get. That's it's just a great feeling. And it's like you want to continue doing it because you like that feeling. That's pretty much, you know, what this feeling is to me. I just love to see when they get it and when they realize that they can do it. I mean, I enjoy the the parental messages. I love those, but I love the fact that they recognize what we're doing and what they worked on and they were able to see them executed in the games. So that's the real joy for me. Um, And I just wanted to share that with you guys because, I mean, I get a lot of text messages. I get a lot of phone calls. I get a lot of compliments for what we do. And I tell them all the time, you know, it's not us. It's them. They're the ones who are executing it. So we're never going to take too much credit, just like we're never going to take too much brain because the system that we have is is it's it's a perfect system in a sense that as long as you do and work, you're going to get better. How much better is, is always dependent on you. Uh, now, I do have a pet peeve. My pet peeve is uh, watching watching basketball. I watch college. I watch NBA. And I watch high school. And my question is, if you are guarding a shooter and you know this person can shoot, why are you off of them too far? I understand defensive rotation. I do. I teach it. So I know that you need to be in a help position. But you should always anticipate if you're on the other side of the court, there are three to four other people on your team that are in there that are that should be keeping that person or helping that, that your team their teammate from letting somebody just drive straight to the basket. Right. You're probably one of the last line of defense. You should be able to anticipate that that ball is probably going to go to the person that you're guarding who's just hit three or four threes in a row. You should be willing to make that person do something else. Now, if they catch it, you fly out of them and you chase them off the three. Chasing them off the three means that you you get there before they can shoot it. They can't shoot the three. So they have to take a one or two dribble pull up jump shot or to the basket. If your philosophy defensive is defensively is we're going to chase them off the three, then you've done your job. Now everybody else is supposed to rotate, but I've seen time and time again, bad closeouts, no hand up, right? No effort to get out there. If you know your guy's a shooter, you're going to, you're going to get it. Hey, I'll give you an example for anybody who's ever played pickup ball. You ever play pickup ball, basketball, and you're in the game, and you happen to be guarding the worst player in in the gym, right? This guy can't, he can't shoot, he can't dribble. All he does is walk up and down the court. He takes the ball out. He he sets weird screens. You know, he doesn't do anything. But if the game is tied up, the next point wins, you don't let his ass shoot. <laughs> you don't let him shoot. Because nine times out of ten, He's going to make that shot. You know, he could be o he could be o for one hundred and thirty six, but he's gonna finish the game one for one hundred and thirty seven. He's gonna make that last shot. So if you understand that, you should know. Okay, if my guys hit a couple of shots, I need to make sure I don't let him shoot. But I've seen some very poor defensive uh, rotations on all three levels, and I've also seen some poor effort to get out on those shooters and make those shooters. Hey, if he, if he makes a one dribble pull up or he makes a, a one dribble step back or a side step pull three, he had to do something else. So you defensively forced him to do something that he didn't want to do. He just made a better play. And sometimes you got to shake that person hand and say, man, that was a good move, but I'm not going to let you sit up here and keep shooting threes. I'm closing out. I'm going to be one more step closer to you than I was initially and I'm going to make sure I get out there to you. Or I'm going to talk to coach say, hey, coach, we're going to have to help. They're going to have to help themselves. I'm not leaving them because he's hit three in a row. All right. 
But that's my take on that. Now, the one thing I do want to mention is setting screens. OK, how do you set screens and how do you use them? Uh, it is something that I, I work on with kids a lot, especially the lower kids. But it's fascinating that even on the high levels, I see uh, people setting improper screens. They're they, they're not setting the right angle. Their feet are too close. They're not bent to, uh, you know, bent in a proper position to absorb contact. And uh, it's 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 something that we have to teach. So I've se- I've worked on my kids, making sure that you have a wider base that you, you know, you keep your hands in front to absorb any unnecessary contact from the from the defensive player trying to get through the screen. Um, when I say, how do you use them? Here's what I mean. In my opinion, and in like 99% of coaches on all levels, if the, if the screener is setting the screen and the ball handler starts to go over the screen and move before that screen is set and that that uh, screener gets called for a blocking foul or offensive foul. That's the ball handler's fault. So I try to teach my kids, you wait until they are set before you move. Because anytime you try to make a move and you start moving before it's set, they're going to run into them. And, and, and that's a, that's a, a foul on, on the, uh, on the offense. You can't be moving. Your feet have to be planted and uh, allow, you know, yourself to be there before that guy comes uh tries to go into the screen so when you're setting the screen if if the ball handler is going to try to go left then the screener is going to set the screen with his right foot on top it needs to be outside of the foot and it's probably an angle i've seen some kids that come in they set a screen and they stand behind them and then i have to show them if you stand behind them there's no uh, resistance for me to go to the side. I can just keep, you know, going around. But when you set it on the side, kind of at an angle, it forces me to end up going uh, trail trailing the, the ball handler after the screen. So screens are very important, you know, when you're running pick and roll. And we'll get off into pick and roll uh, uh, at, at a later point. But uh, screens are very effective. And. The, the way the game is being played now, you know, teams use screens more than anything. Pick and pop, pick and roll, you know, uh, all the different five out offenses. So uh, screens are very effective. And if you don't know how to set a good screen, if you're getting called for fouls, you know, you need to have a conversation with the person who's handling the ball and you need to make sure your feet are set. Because if they're not set, if that defender tries to step over and trips on your foot, they're going to call you for tripping, even if you're set for some reason. I've seen that call. So you got to make sure that that person is not getting uh, through you. They need to be have to they have to be forced to go underneath or come over once the ball handler goes. OK. Um, bonus content. I'm going to discuss by uh, I'm going to discuss players not being afraid of taking shots. Game not slowing down for kids, learning to pro hop or jump stop. And I'm also going to talk about the origin of street cred sports. I don't, I don't I've told that story before to mainly to other people. I don't think I've ever brought it up. I think I don't know. I, I'd have to look back. I don't think I know I hadn't brought it up, you know, since I've been since I was restarted the podcast. So I want to touch on that and uh give y'all some information on this. So I look, I enjoyed today. Um, I hope I can get y'all vote for governor so I can fix this road construction. (laughs) I don't know if I can do anything about it now, but hell maybe in next year I can, I can take care of it. But look, I appreciate y'all to the fullest and I'm going to end it as I always do. If it was easy, everyone will be doing it. I'm out.